Hey guys, and welcome back to another ranking video right here on Tetrabit Gaming. Ah, what a lovely day. Can't wait to go outside and play some tennis, golf, bowling. Well, I guess those plans for the day are ruined, but thankfully I still have my Wii kicking around, so we can still play through some of those sports vicariously. Both Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort basically defined what Nintendo wanted the Wii to be, for the most part. A console where anyone could plop down, shake a remote around at the screen for a bit, and have a fun and safe time. It's no wonder these games have sold a combined total of around 116 million copies to date. That said, not all of the sports in these games are created equal, so in this video I'll be ranking all of the sports and their submodes from Wii Sports and Resort from worst to best. And as always, please keep in mind this is based on my own subjective opinion, so odds are we'll probably disagree on some sports. Now enough talk, let's get to it. Starting things off, we have all three of the tennis training games, which I'll group together since I really think they're all equally mediocre. In each mode, the game tests your accuracy in returning the ball to a certain area. Problem is, this is easier said than done given the Wii Remote's accuracy in the game. Honestly, I felt like I was doing better just by swinging as fast as I could compared to when I was actually trying to aim my shots. I get that these are here to help improve how you play, but each of these sub-games are just so forgettable and, quite frankly, not that fun. On that same note, Swing Control is very similar to the previous accuracy-driven games, although this time I feel like I at least have a bit more control over where I hit the ball. However, the timing difference required to change which direction you hit the ball is so small, making it quite hard to get the ball to go where you want. Either way, I think there are much better sub-games out there. While boxing and its other training games are pretty solid, this one is in my opinion certainly the weakest of the bunch by far. On paper, it sounds simple enough, either punch left or right depending on which blocker mat holds up. Easy, right? Well, it might have been had the accuracy of the motion controls been more reliable. I find myself more often than not punching mats, even if I try my best to aim my punches higher or lower. An accuracy tester isn't a great thing with controllers that, well, aren't accurate. These sub-games I'll lump together again since they both have you trying to get a spare with a bunch of pins already knocked over, with spin control just including some barriers on the lane. These are obviously meant to help you practice for situations like these in the game, but again, I'd much rather just play the normal bowling game and take care of these situations there as they come up. Also, as the name implies, spin control is a bit more challenging as it forces you to work on your spin, obviously. Problem is, due to the Wii's not very accurate motion sensing, I find the ball seldom spins the way I want it to. Spin Control actually makes a return in Wii Sports Resort, and I only rate it a bit higher because with the addition of the Wii Motion Plus feature, I feel like the player has much better control of how the ball spins, thus fixing a big gripe I had with the original version. Batting practice is pretty straightforward, the pitcher will throw 30 balls in rapid succession, and it's your goal to just hit as many of them as possible. Not too much to this one, and whenever I play it, I feel like I'd rather just be playing the main baseball mode. Not much to say here, it's just putting practice, it's fine. Similar to putting practice, only here you're just practicing to hit the ball onto the green, which is often much easier. Skydiving in Wii Sports Resort is pretty cool the first time, but I really can't see myself ever wanting to come back to it. You have to control your fall to link up with other divers and then try to take a picture of the squad. I guess it's a cool way to show off the Wii Motion Plus controls, and that's probably why the game starts off with this mode, but I just really don't think it's all that fun. I definitely think canoeing is another one of the weaker Wii Sports out here. You just have to paddle left and right to make turns accordingly and get to the end goal within the time limit. It's not too exciting. Well, except for finishing with 0.1 seconds on the clock. That was pretty hype. Both canoeing and skydiving were apparently last-minute additions to the game, so I guess that might explain why there just isn't as much to these games. Next is my favorite of the golf sub-games, Target Practice, which has you playing basically a golf version of darts. And this mode also reminds me of Monkey Target from Super Monkey Ball. It's straightforward, but also fun and challenging at the same time. 
And although the speed and direction of the wind changes to shake things up, I do wish that the target areas would change themselves or move or something. This is basically returning balls from Wii Sports Tennis Mode, only the table tennis version here is much more palatable. And once again, I attribute this to the Wii Motion Plus controls, allowing you to much better control where exactly you hit the ball. Here too, after a while, cans will start to pop up on the table to further reward you for your accuracy if you manage to hit it. Overall, a much needed improvement over the tennis version. Wakeboarding isn't the worst by any means, but it's just not a sport I enjoy playing all too much. You basically just tilt the remote left or right to move into the wake to get some air and maybe do a trick before landing back onto the water. The big challenge here is that you have to land flat, otherwise you lose momentum and don't get any points. It's fun to pull off and watch the cool tricks, but overall it's not that exciting of a game here, especially when compared to some of the others. Another really basic game, just dodge all the tennis balls that Matt here throws at you. It's hectic fun though, and it really puts your reaction time to the test. You almost have to kind of put your whole body into it too, so not only is it fun, but it'll get your heart rate going as well. If you're all about hitting home runs, then this is the sub game for you. The pitcher cuts you some slack here and throws the ball so it's easier to hit. Something about this mode I just find so much more satisfying than the other baseball ones, and I remember always replaying this one to try and get all 10 balls out of the park when I was younger. Speed Slice is another test of the player's reaction time, as you have to slice an object in a certain direction faster than your opponent. Nothing too revolutionary, but still a pretty fun time. It's fine against CPUs, but once again this mode shines when playing against a real person. Bowling is probably the Wii Sport that I played the least growing up. It's not bad or anything, and I think it's really a decent bowling simulator, but for me anyway, I just kinda got bored of it after only a few games. I guess since there's a real lack of variety between games, as each round is pretty much the same. I played the three-point contest a lot in NBA Live 2005 for the GameCube back in the day, and this mode here is basically the same thing, but with less Reggie Miller and more motion controls. Honestly, it was hard for me at first to get a hang of when and how to throw the ball, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad, and then you just have to try and stay consistent. My only real gripe here is that after you get 30 points, there's really not much else you can strive to. Now this is absolutely a personal issue with this game, but I've never really been a fan of any sort of game mechanic where you have to like, pace yourself, and that's basically the case in cycling here, as if you overdo it and lose all three hearts, you have to stop and rest for a bit. So you pretty much have to find a balance between pedaling hard and coasting. I find keeping track of this kind of annoying and cumbersome. This mode has a lot of similarities to Mario Kart, minus the items of course, so imagine if you had to like, slow down every once in a while in a Mario Kart race. That's kind of what I feel like with this game. Now, although I'm not a huge fan of the gameplay, I do love that you get to race around several different tracks which span various scenic parts of the entire Woohoo Island. I've always been a pretty big fan of the Mario Tennis games, especially for the N64 and GameCube. And although those are simplified versions of tennis for the most part already, tennis on Wii Sports is simplified even further. I mean, yeah, I get that it was designed around just using a single Wii remote, but not being able to control where your Mii goes almost makes the game too easy. Like, you can get pretty far along just by shaking your Wii remote as fast as you can, and that just doesn't make it feel like a proper tennis game. I will say though, getting a bunch of friends together and having everyone shake their Wii remotes as fast as they can is a fun time. I guess maybe Nintendo didn't want to alienate players that didn't have a bunch of extra nunchucks, but still, an option to connect some nunchucks or even use the D-pad to control the Miis would have been nice. Duel is another pretty simple sport mode, hit your opponent off the platform and watch them fall like 100 feet to the water below. You can play very offensively just by swinging your Wii remote as fast as you can, but here that can actually be detrimental, as if an opponent blocks a strike, you'll be left immobile for a few seconds leaving you open to a counterattack. It's cool that this game encourages a good mix of offense and defense. Also, this is an awesome two-player game to play with a friend. When playing this game for the first time, I learned that Frisbee is a registered trademarked name, and not just a generic term for a flying plastic disc. Honestly surprised Nintendo got the license to use the name too. Anyways, this mode features a cute little doggo who has to run and catch your frisbee throws, no matter how shitty they may be. 
It's a pretty simple game, but it does well at testing how well you can time your release, as well as the strength and angle of your throw. Showdown puts you up against a slew of other Mii Sword fighters as you have to slash your way through them all. It's tactically very similar to Duel, as you have to look for openings to strike your opponents, only here you only have to worry about hitting each enemy one to three times. Although in principle it's similar, in terms of single player gameplay anyway, this mode I find much more fun, and I love that it has 10 different levels. Whereas most training games I think are worse than the main version, I think the opposite of some of the bowling games. If you like the bowling game, but feel like a maximum of 300 points just isn't enough, then the 100 pin mode in Wii Sports is the mode for you. Here, each round obviously has 100 pins, and you can score hundreds if not thousands of points more than in a regular game. The amount of points and the sound of the pins all being hit is super satisfying. <laughs> Although similar in concept, I think Power Throws from Wii Sports is a bit better since you're not always throwing at 100 pins, which kind of gets stale after the first few throws. Here you only start with 10 pins, and then slowly build your way up to 91, and I think this build up to a large set of pins is much more rewarding. I think growing up, working the bag was one of my favorite modes in all of Wii Sports. It's really simple, punch and destroy as many bags as possible in the given time limit. It's just one of those games where you just want to play over and over again and try to get a new high score. I can't say many of the other training games here give me that same feeling. Although easy to get into, I think baseball is one of the toughest games to master in Wii Sports. Now hitting the ball isn't too hard, but unless you're a pro and constantly hitting home runs, you'll be a noob like me and you'll keep hitting foul balls, getting short hits, and striking out. It's a fine single player experience, but I definitely think it shines as a two player game. Overall, pretty good. Power cruising really gives me wave race vibes, and here you have to cruise through several checkpoints as fast as you can to get a higher score. Oh, looks like the director of Wii Sports Resort, Katsuya Eguchi, also headed Wave Race 64. What a coincidence! It controls pretty well, all things considered, and it's a fun challenge to retry several times over. You can also just cruise around the island for a bit and look for extra time, which is a nice little relaxing side game. Table tennis in Wii Sports Resort is I think basically a better version of tennis from the original game, mostly because the court is smaller so it doesn't feel like much of an inconvenience that you can't control your Mii's movements, and also that just shaking the remote isn't nearly as broken. I find this is definitely a much more pleasant experience overall. While I don't think the tennis mode is nearly as good as some of the Mario Tennis games, golf here I think is a pretty good contender to some entries in the Mario Golf series. I'd say Wii Sports Golf requires a bit more skill compared to the other games, but it does so without alienating new players too, by offering simpler courses aimed at beginner to intermediate players. The scenery looks really good too as far as Wii graphics go, and overall the game plays and feels pretty good. There are also 9 different holes, each based on the original NES golf game, which again increase in difficulty. Outside of the occasional wonkiness with the motion sensing, the game plays how you'd expect a motion controlled golf game should. Golf also makes a reappearance in Wii Sports Resort. It certainly has the edge though, since in addition to featuring all 9 of the holes from the original Wii Sports, it also boasts new island holes, as well as again, improved motion control accuracy. It also has a very handy meter that predicts your swing strength based on how far back you swing the remote. This version pretty much fixes all the problems I had with the original and then some. Wii Sports Resort also features a frisbee variant of golf, which honestly I like a tad more. It has the same courses as the regular golf mode, only here the different terrains don't really affect your shot, and you don't have to get the ball in a hole, but instead just throw the frisbee into a large glowing pillar of light. You don't even have to be accurate in terms of distance with this pillar, you can just throw it as hard as you want and it'll stop the disc if you hit it. I don't know how the Mad Lads did it, but somehow Nintendo was able to develop a pretty competent 3 on 3 basketball mode that's only controlled with a single Wii Remote. I think it's a really fun and replayable game, especially with friends. 
It's obviously not super deep of a game, but it's quite the feat to be able to make a basketball game complete with shooting, passing, stealing, blocking, and dunking, all with only three different button inputs and shaking a controller. Although I may not think it's the best sport in Wii Sports Resort, archery is one of my favorites to replay. The concept of shooting an arrow to a target is pretty basic, but this mode shakes it up with changing the distance to the target, adding obstacles, and even changing the elevation. And as goofy as it may feel to do, holding the Wii Remote and pulling back the nunchuck to shoot an arrow is also pretty intuitive. You also get to play inside a literal volcano. That's pretty slick. Probably a pretty hot take, but I gotta say, Island Flyover has got to be one of the best Wii Sports out there. If you've watched my Wii Sports Lost Bits video, you may remember that this sport was originally planned to be in the first Wii Sports, but was scrapped to be later added into this one. Here you basically just fly around the island, and that's it. But I just find it so relaxing to cruise around, and you have to keep an eye out for eye points as well as balloons that are found around the island. There are surprisingly quite a few of these to find, which encourages the player to explore new areas and replay the mode several times over. Now I haven't been including any of the other multiplayer modes separately since they aren't that different from the single player experience, but the two player dogfight airplane mode certainly stands out from the rest. It's basically Mario Kart 64's balloon battle, but without items, in the sky, and in a much larger stage. The goal here is to have the most points, or to bring the other player's balloon number down to zero. Or if you don't want to fight each other, you and your player 2 can also just sign an armistice and peacefully explore the island together, just like in the flyover mode, though here there aren't any objects to find and collect. Now this is probably my favorite sport mode, but since it's a multiplayer exclusive one, I don't think it would be right to give it the number one spot. And as such, the number one spot goes to... Ah, boxing, or as I like to call it, the biggest reason to get a second nunchuck when the Wii first came out. Honestly, I think this is overall the most fun sport in all of Wii Sports. And this is especially true in playing the two-player mode against a friend. If you've done so, I'm sure you agree. Everything from jabs to uppercuts to dodging and shaking your controllers as hard as you can to get back up after getting knocked down. Wii Sports Boxing is always a good time and an iconic part of Wii Sports as a whole. Need to settle something with a friend or rival? Forget Smash Bros. Dust off your Wii and Wii Sports and duke it out in this ring instead. And there you have it guys, my ranking of every sports from Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort from worst to best and I hope you enjoyed it. What are some of your favorite and least favorite sports in these games? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to slap a like down below and check out my Wii Sports Lost Bits video where I explore the game's unused and unseen contents by clicking on the card right here. Swing by my other social media things, which are all linked below, and if you want to support the channel, check out my merch over at tetrabitgaming.com, or consider becoming the latest member of the Bit Club. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thanks for tuning in! And I will see you in a bit.